today we're going to talk about slope. Now, slope is a very important concept on the graduation test, so we want to make sure that we review it. Alright, so first of all, let me talk about what slope is. The slope of a line measures the steepness of the line. Okay, you're probably already familiar with associating the slope with rise over run, but just for a second, let's talk about rise and run. Where do they come from? Well, rise means how many units you move up or down from point to point. On the graph, that would be the change in the y values. Run means how far left or right you move from point to point, and on the graph, that would be the change in the x values. Now, something else that's very important about rise and run is that the direction is very important. For rise, if you're moving up, that's a positive direction. If you move down, that's a negative direction. Same thing kind of goes for run. If you run to the right, that's a positive direction. And if you run to the left, that's the negative. Now, it's very important to remember that because in a few minutes when we get ready to start finding the slope of actual lines, you need to understand that when you move up, that's positive. Down, that's negative. Right, run to the right, that's positive. Run to the left, that's negative. All right. So first, we're going to talk about some visuals that are going to help us with this definition. First, we have a positive slope. And when a line has a positive slope, that means from left to right, when you read it from left to right, just like you read a book, you start over here and go across the page. When you read from left to right, this line is actually going upward. Okay, so note that when a line has a positive slope, it goes up from left to right. If a line has negative slope, reading it also from left to right, left to right, this line is actually going down, which means it has a negative slope. Note that when a line has a negative slope, it goes down from left to right. A line with zero slope is a horizontal line, a line that goes straight across. Now, why is it a zero slope? Because, remember, we find slope with rise over run. In this case, this one doesn't have a rise. All this line is ever going to do is run. So whenever you don't have a rise, the slope is just going to be zero. Over here, we have a straight up and down line, which is a vertical line, and its slope is undefined. Well, why is that? That's because this line will never have a run. And in order for your function or your line to have a slope, it has to have a run. As you can see, this line only goes up and down. No run at all, no left to right. So that means that we have an undefined slope. How do you find the slope of a line? Well, talked about it already a little bit. We find it by using rise over run. Now, as you can see, this line has clearly distinct points already plotted for us. They're not going to always do that for us. So the rule of thumb is, is to always just pick two points that you can clearly identify the coordinates of. For example, here we have 2, 5. We have the point 1, 3. We have the point 0, 1. We have the point negative 2, negative 3 and a whole bunch of other points. Now, what's true about finding slope is you can pick any two points on a line and find slope, and it will always be the same. It doesn't matter if they're far apart, if they're really close together, the slope will always be the same. Everybody in your classroom right now could pick their own two different points off this line, and every single person should have the exact same slope. All right, so for example, we're going to just use, mm, let's use negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 3. Okay, so remember how we find slope? Rise over run. And make sure that we are paying attention to the direction that that's, those slopes are going in. Alright, so let's go. Here, we have this point. We're going to rise and run until we can get to this point over here. So let's start here. We're going to rise, then run. 
See how I did that? Made like a little stare. I rise, then I run. Now, let's go ahead and count up how many units I rise. Okay, so we went up one, two, three, four units. So over here, I'm going to write, we went up four units. Now, what's, that, what's important there is what direction we went in. We went up. So I want to say that we went four up. And remember, up is a positive direction. So that means that that is a positive four. What about my run? After I finished rising here, I started to run. How many units across did I run? One, two. So my run is two. And how many units did I run? Two. What direction? To the right. Now, because I ran to the right, what kind of two is that? It's positive. To move to the right is a positive direction. So, remember, M equals rise over run. So, let's go over here and calculate. M equals rise, which is positive 4 because we went up 4, over my run which is positive 2 because it went to the right 2 units. If I simplify that, 4 over 2 is actually equal to 2. So m, which is the variable for slope, m is the same as slope, m is equal to 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. The slope of this line is 2 units. Next problem. How do you find the slope of this line? Well, um, same thing. Rise over run. This time, I didn't just put the points on there. We want to identify them for ourselves. So, let's see. I clearly see that negative 4 down here, 0, negative 4, is a clear point. And over here, 4, negative 1 is a clear point that I can identify by its coordinates. So I put dots on those two points. Now, we're going to use rise over run. Here, I'm going to start at this bottom point. I'm going to rise before I run. Rise over run. So, let's start here. Let's rise. That's as far as I need to go. Then I'm going to run. Now, let's look at this. First, let's calculate our rise. How many units did we go up? One, two, three. And what direction? Up. Now, let's calculate my run. Here, we started here. So, I have one, two, three, four units across. And what direction did we move from our run? We went to the right. Alright, so we went up 3 and to the right 4. So when we come over here to calculate my slope, that is M is equal to rise over run. What kind of 3 is that? It's positive because we moved up. So that's positive 3 over, what's my run? Positive 4, because I'll move to the right. Alright, so M, which is the same as slope, is equal to 3 over 4. Can we reduce the fraction 3 over 4? No. So it just stays like that. The slope is just 3 over 4. Next example. How do we find the slope of this line? Hmm. Rise over 1? That's correct. So this time, we're going to have to go on there and make our own points. They didn't give us any. That doesn't mean you can't do the problem. All right. So let's see if we can find some clear points where they go through coordinates. I see 0, 0. No, 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 no. Yep. Here at negative 2, 5. 
All right. So, remember, you must rise before you run. So, I'm going to go from this bottom point up to that top one. Let's go. We're going to rise. Then we're going to run. All right, so let's calculate what we did there. My rise, we went up one, two, three, four, five. And what direction did we go in? Up. And that is very important for you to recognize. We went five up. Now, what was my run? We went over one, two. But this time, what direction did we go in? We went in to the left this time. We ran to the left, and that is important. Alright, so when I come over here to find my slope, m is equal to rise, which is positive 5, because we went up, over, okay, I went to the left 2 this time. So because I moved to the left 2, that means that my run is actually negative 2. Now, we don't really need to have that negative in the bottom of the fraction. What we can do is we can move it out in front of the whole fraction. So we can rewrite that as negative 5 over 2. Now, can we reduce that fraction? No, we can't. So, it stays like that. The slope is just negative 5 over 2. Next example, how do you find the slope of this line? Mm, rise over run. So, we're going to go in here. We're going to pick two distinct points. Um, I think that I want to choose 5, 5. Not 5, 5. That is the point, 5, 0. And let's choose 1, 4. All right. So, we're going to do our rise over run. Oops. So, we're going to, from this point, rise. and then run. Alright, so let's go ahead and calculate my rise. First of all, we went 1, 2, 3, 4. So we went 4 up, which means what kind of 4 is that? Positive. Then, let's count our run. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 4. In what direction did we go? To the left. Calculating my slope, we are going to go ahead and start this. M equals rise over run, which is 4 over because it's positive. Remember, my rise was positive because we went up over negative 4. Why? Because my run is to the left, which means it is negative. If we simplify that, 4 over negative 4 is negative 1. So the slope of this line is negative 1. Now, on the next few examples, we have to just be able to identify what this line should look like. Here we have a horizontal line. Straight across, all it does is run. What type of slope does it have? Its slope oops, is always equal to 0. Now, remember, horizontal line straight across, left to right, that slope is zero. What about the slope of this line? Vertical line. It has no run at all. So that means that the slope of this, this line is 
undefined. Alright, so make sure you understand rise over run, and it's also very important for you to understand the difference in the positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, and undefined slope. Be careful and make sure that you read the questions and make sure you understand what they're asking you for.